Welcome to Module 3, Interaction via Text. In Module 2, we looked at the very beginnings of storytelling. And so at the very end of the unit, I asked you to animate a very basic story. And so here on the screen right now is a story that might have been a homework assignment for homework number two. It's the, st it's the story of Jack and Jill. So if we run it here, we have Mother Goose down in the corner who introduces this, the story of Jack and Jill. And then she tells the story, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack falls down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. So a fairly basic telling of the story, uh, you know, not, nothing too fancy, but a, but a good interaction with thing. Well, what we want to do is to use this as a starting point for this next module. Uh, and so this story, Jack and Jill, uh, is available on the website for you to download and use as you follow along with me. And what we want to do in this particular uh, module is look at a first form of interaction in Scratch. Up until now, all the programs that we've run in Scratch have basically involved a human user coming up and, you know, pressing the green flag and then sitting back and watching without actually interacting with the story. And we want to know what could we do to add in some interaction. And so what we're going to look at in this module is one form of that interaction, which is interaction via text. And, and what I mean by that is we want to look at how we can interact with a, with a Scratch program that will ask us questions and at which we will type in textual answers. And by text, I don't literally mean A, B, C, D, uh, alphabetical kinds of text always, although we will use that, but it also can be a numerical text. So you might be able to ask a question and type in a numerical answer uh, and we'll use that as well. But what we want to use in this particular uh, module is looking at taking this story of Jack and Jill and having Mother Goose ask a couple of questions and customize the story for the people uh, involved, for the user watching the particular story based on their answers. In this lesson, we looked at a non-interactive version of the Jack and Jill story. What we'll do as we move forward is begin to make this interactive. And as we do so, I want you to begin to think about ways that you could engage your students with interaction in their own stories.